What's going on, everybody? Uh, as some of you know, back in February, I released my first book, A Lesson Learned. And since releasing my book, a lot of surreal and crazy things have happened that I know has only been through God. Um, this past weekend, I talked at Livingstone College in Salisbury, North Carolina, and I talked to about 90 students about my book, A Lesson Learned, with hopes that it'll make a difference when they hear some of the stories and they won't go through some of the same things me and my friends went through while we were in college and they can stay focused. And I also have former NBA player Josh Howard, who has a chapter in the book, come out and speak. But the way I got that gig was a crazy story. Like I said, in February, I released my book. And two days after releasing my book, my cousin Dominique, who lives in D.C., she passed away. And when she died, I was stuck with the dilemma Am I going to fly home or drive home? Plane tickets were very expensive, and I wasn't trying to spend that money. But I decided I was going to rent a car, drive home, and then catch a one-way flight back the following day after the funeral. I told my friends my plan, and they thought I was crazy. But I, I, but I also told them that I was going to stop at a few of the schools in North Carolina and Virginia to talk about my book and talk to a few students and professors and directors about my book and see what happens. And I wasn't worried because I knew I had the idea and I knew I didn't have that idea for no reason. I knew it was coming from God because I'd been praying so much and the idea just made sense. So 4.30 in the morning, load up the car, pray before I got pray before I left Atlanta. And when I got to, the first school I got to was Johnson C. Smith, my old school, my alma mater. And when I got there, I was thinking, I'm going to be here for about 30 minutes and just keep it going. I'm going to talk to somebody, give them the book meet some students, take pictures of the students holding the book, and roll out. Well, got on campus, met some students, took pictures, but then I talked to about three people, maybe four, talked to Dr. Davenport, Miss Rippey, and Mr. Mack. And when I started talking to some of the professors, they asked me who I was, I told them about the book, and I ended up talking to them about 45 minutes each. And I didn't mind because I was talking about the book and my and about my journey and you know, they were interested. They seemed real interested. So that turned into almost three hours. So I was getting behind schedule already. But I had an appointment at North Carolina A and T because my friend Monique mother worked there and she's an advisor. So I had to get to the I had to get to A and T ASAP. But in between that was Livingstone College. So I pulled up to Livingstone College, and when I pulled up, all the students were outside because it was kind of warm that day. Campus was packed, and I pulled on campus. I was like, man, I can't be on here for two hours like I was at Johnson C. Smith. I got to meet who I need to meet now. So I turned down the music, and I started praying, and I asked God to bring the person that I need to meet as soon as I get out of the car. So I get out of the car, take some pictures of a student holding the book, and then I see a few older guys walking with suits on who look like professors. A few of the guys split up, but it was still one older gentleman walking with a suit on. And I seen him and I chased him down. I was like, excuse me, excuse me. And I asked him his name. His name was Coach Cal. And I told him about my book. And he was listening, but he was in a rush. But he was really, he was listening. He, I could tell I had his attention once I started telling him what it was about. And he said, you know, that sounds like a real good book. And he said, and I gave him a copy. And he said, um, he'll be in touch. So the following months came, and I, I called him. He didn't respond. I emailed him, didn't respond. So I just let it go. You know, I didn't mind. I feel like it's, if it's meant to happen, it's meant to happen. If that door is meant to open, it will open. So one day, I sent out a mass email about my book for promotion, and I sent it to some of the professors that I met on that trip. And he called me back. He emailed me, and then he called me, and he said, uh, I read your book, and I love your book, and I think... It would be great for the incoming freshmen, and I want to have you come in and talk. And I was shocked. I was like, wow. I pulled on campus, and in 10 minutes, I prayed, and I met the person that I needed to meet. And I was able to make it to my appointment in Greensboro. And I went there this past weekend and talked to students, and I had a blast. We played games. I told them about the stories. I saw one girl crying when I told her about my best friend, Jeff Passon. And, you know, just thinking about that story, it was like, um, it was like I was achieving while grieving, which is one of the chapters in my book about my best friend dying. But when my cousin died, I was doing the same thing. I was achieving while grieving, you know, because that's what they want you to do anyway. They, people who pass on, they want you to keep going and keep chasing the dreams because they're still looking over you and want to see you succeed. So I wanted to tell that story just with hopes that, you know, if you're trying to chase your dream or 
you got an idea to keep going and act on it. You know, everybody's not blessed to have an idea. I've had a lot of ideas. This book wasn't my first idea. I've had a lot of ideas and I've gave up on some or I didn't act on some. And then I see somebody else. I don't even know doing the same thing I'm doing. Because uh, I believe that if you don't use the talents God has given you or the ideas, he's going to give them to somebody else. So keep going and keep praying and staying focused on whatever you're doing and cut all the negativity out and live right. Because I've been living right. I cut a lot of things in my life, you know, a lot. If you know me, you know I was having a good time. But I cut a lot of that stuff back because if it doesn't add up, you got to subtract it. Because if it doesn't add up, you can't multiply. And I just started living the word and getting more into the word and doing my thing. And it's been paying off a lot. I got a million other stories like that. A million that I know is nothing but God. I mean, it's not a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. It's meant to happen. This is ordained. And, um, yeah, just keep going and... I mean, you see my journey. A lot of y'all have seen it. I mean, so I'm living proof. Just keep going and chasing your dreams.